Joining me live now to discuss all of this, the Executive Vice President at the National Taxpayers Union, Brandon Arnold. Brandon, good to see you, my friend. Yeah, thanks for having me. Um, look, Bidenomics, it, it really is the worst uh, public relations and campaign maybe ever. Probably worse than giving a guy a beer in a bathtub and calling it good for a beer company that went uh, bottom up. Um, Bidenomics. Every time the economy does anything, they're held responsible. I don't know whose idea this was. Terrible idea because the truth of the matter is the economy is not really working for most Americans right now, is it? No, not at all. I mean, Bidenomics is more of a threat than a promise of prosperity as they're trying <laughs> to make it seem. You look at you look at what's actually happening to Americans right now. You know, uh, bankruptcies are up 16 percent relative to last year. Nation's credit card debt, our total national credit card debt, is over a trillion dollars. We are borrowing money in order to stay afloat in this economy. That's not a good thing, especially as the Fed continues to raise interest rates. It's raised interest rates by about five percentage points over the last year and a half, making that credit card debt even more dangerous, pushing up those bankruptcies and pushing up the default rate on things like automobile loans. So no matter how many times they say Bidenomics is working, people aren't buying it because they see themselves gathering this get debt, gaining this debt, seeing prices increase at the big box stores, at the grocery stores, at the gasoline station, everywhere they go to buy things. So the American people are smarter than this, fortunately. They're not buying Bidenomics and they're not going to be changing their tune anytime soon, no matter how many times the president says it's working. Yeah, and the, and the president's polling numbers, according to Gallup, when it comes to the economy, uh, are stagnant in the mid-30% range. I'm not sure who it's working for, but for two-thirds of Americans, Bidenomics is not working. That's a poll that's out. 63% disapprove of Joe Biden's handling of the economy, tied with his disapproval on relations with China, and um, slightly behind his 66% disapproval on immigration. Where is Joe Biden winning? Because, look, you bring all these folks in across the border where we've welded open the gates. They're competing for jobs. At least some of them are. Uh, we've got a, a job market now that's actually tightening. The number of job vacancies is actually evaporating because the Fed's raising rates because of all the reckless spending. All back to Bidenomics, it comes, Brandon. And, and there, I don't see a tea leaf I can turn over and say, well, this looks good. Not energy prices, not the border, not job opportunities, not actual wage growth. Nothing. Yeah, I mean, I think what they're looking at is the inflation rate is coming down. That's the one positive thing that we can say about this economy right now. And that is good news, but we got a long way to go. It's only very recently that inflation has begun to get below wage grip. So we're, we've seen inflation so high that prices have increased faster than wages have. That means people are getting poorer, even if their salaries are increasing or even if they're getting a little bit more uh, on a per hour basis, they're falling behind because inflation is so out of control. And then you look at the uh, the federal government's finances, a trillion dollar deficit as far as the eye can see, moving up to two trillion dollars in deficits in the not too distant future. He's completely mismanaged our nation's uh, financial situation. The only groups that I can see really enthusiastically endorsing Joe Biden are government unions because he's made the government larger He's given a high degree of job security. They already had pretty good job security for anyone who works for the federal government. Besides that, I don't know where support for this guy is coming from. Well, I want to talk about one thing. You know, the, the price of gasoline, for example, is exactly where it was a year ago, just shy of $4. Um, this is something that every family deals with, whether they have to go to school or the soccer game or to work every day. Everybody feels the pinch of the energy that is being charged at the pump. And this is all during this fantasy that somehow we're going to convert to EVs in the next 15 minutes. And everybody's going to magically drive an EV to work and sing Kumbaya. You know, the average EV is, what, sixty, seventy thousand dollars $70,000. Most people can't afford a $400 emergency. A $400 emergency would set most families uh, into the ditch financially. And yet they just keep singing the praise of, of Bidenomics. At what point do you say, look, that's not working? Or are they in this and can't, they've already embraced it and it's over? Well, the problem is when we say things aren't working, what the Biden administration does is go ahead and try to subsidize these things. And that's exactly what happened 
with electric vehicles. Some people think EVs are great, more power to them. If you want to drive that kind of vehicle, go for it. This is America. You can make those kinds of choices. But what happened when, when they didn't see the production of EVs, we started to subsidize them. Even cars that were extraordinarily expensive that are being purchased by people making six figures, people making hundreds of thousands of dollars, getting thousands of dollars of subsidies in order to purchase these types of vehicles. They may be a, a more commonplace 10, 20 years from now. I don't know. But right now, that average family that needs to get to soccer practice, let alone to get to work, the grocery store, what have you, they need more affordable gas slowly. They are not, as you said, going to go out and buy a Tesla. It just ain't happening. So what we see right. from this administration is reducing the amount of energy, not increasing the amount of energy that is available. And thus, that's why we've seen prices go so high and, and been so volatile. Well, and the other thing, you know, yes, inflation's down to 3% currently, but it's cumulative. Prices are 17% higher than they were just two years ago, whether it's eggs or milk or gasoline, mortgage rates are three and a half times higher. The 30-year mortgage rate on average is three and a half times higher than it was just a couple of years ago. I mean, Brandon, those are things that choke out the American dream. It chokes out the American dream in so far that people that want a chance to have their own home and have a part of the American dream, they're, they're boxed out because of Bidenomics. Who does it work for? Yeah, I mean, that's been the real problem. The Fed has been the only government agency that has tackled inflation in a meaningful way. Biden and the Democrats in Congress passed the so-called Inflation Reduction Act, which Biden has since admitted did nothing for inflation. If anything, in the short term, it drove up inflation. Meanwhile, the only way the Fed can reduce inflation is by hurting the economy, by making Americans poor. If you have less money in your wallet, that means you have less money to go out to the store. And when you go out to the store less often, that reduces demand. So that's basic economics there. It does work, but it comes at a very, very high cost. Like you said, it's very, very difficult to buy a house now. If you can even find any inventory out there, when you go to actually fill out that paperwork to get a mortgage, you're going to find you're paying far more than you expected. So what well, we should have there's seen... A there's a second half of that story that we'll be covering here in the days to come, but BlackRock, Vanguard, and State Street are these companies that are buying up middle-class homes. People come in and think they can buy a home, then a cash offer comes in. So the interest rates are high, then cash offers come in from these companies that know, they know that at some point, at least they, they strongly believe and anticipate that the government, using my tax dollars, are going to be paying rent for middle-class families in America. There's no other explanation for BlackRock and Vanguard and all these companies be gobbling up all of these homes. I'll give you the last word. Yeah, I mean, I think what we need here is more of a supply side approach to writing this economy. That means bringing more housing online so you don't have a situation where big companies are going in and purchasing homes. It means bringing more energy online. It means increasing manufacturing. And we can help do that with better tax policy. Biden has moved us in the wrong direction when it comes to tax policy. We need incentives for companies to grow their manufacturing capabilities here on the U.S. soil. There are plans to do that. So in the United States House of Representatives, uh, Chairman Jason Smith and the Ways and Means Committee is pushing legislation that would do just that. Biden and Democratic uh, allies on Capitol Hill, unfortunately, are stymieing that. So let's produce more here in this country. Let's make more houses, more energy, more stuff. And that's going to drive down inflation. And by the way, create more jobs and prosperity in the process. There you go. Uh, Brandon Arnold from the National Taxpayers Union, thank you for being here. I mean, there's a lot for people to consider every given day, but there's a reason. There's an exodus away from Bidenomics into more sensible ideas. Sir, thank you for taking the time. My pleasure.